late night, which is a behind the scenes comedy or drama comedy or dramedy. Yes, I hate that. It's that's it's never going to work. That word is it? No, it's, it's just awful. horrid. Um, directed by Nishka Natra, whose TV credits include Dear White People, and he made the features Chuck Popcorn and Cosmopolitan, and written by Mindy Carling, who also co-stars, and you, you'll all know anyway. So Emma Thompson is chat show host Catherine Newbury. She is the queen of late night TV. She's smart. She's sharp. And very much like you, Simon, she does proper interviews with proper guests. But Hmm? unlike you, Mm -hmm. her ratings are in a slump. Oh, thank you. And uh, I said this say unlike you. I'm sorry, I began by... You slightly undermined your your praise by laughing and guffawing all the way through it. I'm sorry, because I I actually meant it as a compliment to you, and then I suddenly realised where this sentence was going, and I you know... Never mind. Anyway, okay. Point Unlike point. you, yes. her ratings are in a slump, yes. and um, this, the uh, we discover very early on that the the, the network are in favour of dumping her and getting somebody else in. Um, so she's, you know, suddenly she's having to compete with you know obnoxious white male comedians who are suddenly kind of all the rage. But then she looks around her writers' room and realizes that they are all white males, and she doesn't have, you know anything else except for a bunch of uh, nameless white males who she can't even name. In fact, she refers to them by numbers because she can't remember any of them. So she said, she said to her producer, hire me a woman. And the producer is kind of completely stunned and says, okay, fine, enter Mindy Carling, who is uh, Molly Patel, who's been working in a chemical plant, has no experience in comedy at all. But the producer has been told that he has to hire a woman, so he does. So he gets her in and uh, uh, initially she's told by everybody, you know, oh, you're just, a, you're a diversity hiring. You don't have anything to do here. You know, you're, you're, you've only managed, somebody, one person, one of the characters says, I wish I was, uh, you know, a woman of colour, so therefore I could get any job without any qualifications. But before you know it, she's starting to turn the show around. She's convincing Catherine that what she has to do is to talk about things that are important to her, like reproductive rights and like politics. And in a quiet moment, her husband says to Molly, you know, what you really need to do is you need to make make yourself essential. She doesn't have to like you, but she has to need you, which she does at a press conference when Catherine is accused of having all white staff. How would you describe Molly? Molly. Molly. Molly is... She said I was the vibrant splash of colour on the grey canvas of our writing staff. I was really touched. Mm -hmm. And then she said something to me that I will never forget. Mm -hmm. She said to me that despite our very different backgrounds, that I reminded her of a younger Younger her. Younger me. Isn't that wonderful? I mean, (laughs) huge. (laughs) You know what? Everybody's going to want to get this. Let's get a picture of Catherine and her beautiful Indian protege, Molly. Molly. So the setup is very promising and of course the players are very accomplished so it's no surprise that the film delivers a pretty steady stream of laughs not least because Emma Thompson being really imperious is a fantastic thing. One of the the best scenes in um, An Education is the sequence in which she plays the headmistress and um, the young heroine goes in to see her and thinks the headmistress doesn't understand it. She says, you're just saying it because I'm a woman And, and Emma Thompson says... You're not a woman. And she says it in that kind of Emma Thompson completely, like, cutting way. And there are scenes of this in which she comes into the writer's room and she just, you know, I, I, I don't know what you know, I'm just calling you by numbers. And people start, she says, what are you doing? Somebody says, oh, well, I, you know, I, I, I work at... No, 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 I don't care, I don't care, I don't care, I don't care. Just to, and she's very funny. And there is, it's also really nice to see again, um, you know, we're talking about the way in which the world is changing, that this is a comedy which, you know, like movies, like Booksmart, I think, or like Bridesmaids, demonstrate that up until now, we have literally only been seeing half the picture and we are the people who've been losing out as a result of that. There's also a little bit in Emma Thompson's performance of P.L. Travis in... uh, Saving Mr. Banks. You know that thing when she's kind of telling Disney off? It's most discomforting to hear one's name used by somebody. So there's a, there's a little edge of that. Um, the problem with it, I think, is that I wanted more of that sharpness. And I wanted it to be edgier than it was. Because although it's consistently funny, and although the characters are you know well-drawn and likeable, it does in a way, suffer from wanting too much to, to kind of tie up all its loose ends, particularly in the third act when it, it gets very sort of soft around the edges. And I, I was, was, was worrying about what it was that troubled me. And I think it comes down to this. In the end, what I want is something like 
broadcast news meets 30 Rock or Network. And what you actually get is the devil meets Prada meets soap dish. The, the devil wears Prada meets soap dish. Now, that's perfectly fine. And I think that it will find an audience and rightly so because it is consistently funny. And I did laugh all the way through. But I did think that some of the slips in it, in fact, some of the biggest slips are actually in the in the scenes in which they're doing the the TV show recording. There, there are some times that, 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 that um, uh, like, for example, if you look at the Rupert Pupkin stand-up act at the end of King of Comedy, what's genius about it is that you can actually believe that that was what a moderately mid-range bad but also completely unhinged comic would do as a comic monologue. And it's a perfect example of something that actually could have been on television. There are things in this in which... It's it just I don't I wasn't convinced by the by the actual performance of the show on television itself. So very good performances, some very funny jokes, particularly in the first two thirds. The jokes do decline very much in the third half as it and it does try to do things all too neatly. But it's fine and it's fun. I just kind of think that with that kind of talent behind it, I want more, but I'm perfectly happy with what I got.